Any visitor to Sewerby Hall and Gardens who has taken the woodland walk will know that at one point the path dips down into a deep ravine. This feature is not a natural contour in the landscape, but a man-made quarry dug to extract chalk, brick clay and gravels for use as building materials. It is not alone. The estate is peppered with such diggings. There is another large quarry in the North Park that was certainly in operation in the 18th century, and the depression below the penguin pool in the zoo is also the result of quarrying. Other such excavations are to be found outside the curtilage of the modern public park, but still within the bounds of the Graham's estate. The Flamborough chalk that forms the bedrock at Sewerby has long been used as building material, and the proliferation of quarries is an unexpected industrial aspect of the Graham's estate and should be seen in the context of their building activity in the 18th and 19th centuries. Sewerby Hall was built in 1714 as a replacement for an earlier manor house. Then, throughout the first half of the 19th century, the hall and its estate were massively expanded. John Graham III and his son Yarbrough altered the house and landscape beyond recognition. New gardens were created, roads and paths were laid, the gate lodges, stables and church were built, and the house was extended and redeveloped. This was a huge undertaking in terms of resources. Vast amounts of building material and hardcore would have been needed. The transport of such bulk materials would have been expensive and fraught with difficulty. As farmers, the Grahams would have had men, carts and heavy horses at their disposal, and we can imagine that these were mobilised to transport the various building materials that the construction programme needed. And it is almost certain that the tenant farmers were expected to contribute to their haulage requirements. Some stones came from a long distance away. The roof slates would have come from Wales or the Lake District, and the golden sandstone that forms the decorative elements of the buildings and arches probably came from the coal measures of South Yorkshire and Nottinghamshire. No doubt the haulage costs for these materials exceeded their production costs, but the use of such non-local stone was a way of setting the building apart from others and demonstrating the wealth of the family by showing that they could afford the luxury of transporting such heavy items. However, the bulk of the building material would have been obtained locally, and this brings me back to the various quarries, scoops and diggings across the estate. The men who worked these diggings would not have been professional quarrymen, but were instead drawn from the day labourers and farmhands that lived locally. Under the supervision of a more experienced foreman or contractor, they would have laboured by hand to excavate the materials needed for the Graham's great building campaigns. By the 1850s, the various quarries had fallen out of use and were hidden under plantations of trees. No effort was ever made to refill them, and they survive as a testament to a brief industrial episode in the history of the estate, and as a memorial to those who enabled the Grahams to create the Sewerby Hall and Gardens we know today.